Hi everybody, it's Mariana with Three Peaks Classroom. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you my top five favorite books to use to teach about Orange Shirt Day and Truth and Reconciliation Day. And I'm also going to share with you some lesson or activity ideas that you can do in your classroom so that you can feel a lot more confident and prepared to talk about Truth and Reconciliation Day. So let's get started. Now, if you're looking for a quick freebie or a quick activity that you can use with your uh, students on Truth and Reconciliation Day or um, Orange Shirt Day, I do have a free download in my TPD store. The activity is to write a letter to a residential school survivor. The first page talks about all the information that you need to know. And then this page just talks about, it's like information for the students, instructions. And then the last page is a really nice um, blank sheet of paper um, for the students that they can write their final copy on. So if you just need a really quick, easy activity, you can go to my TPT store. I will link it down below and you can just grab that free uh, activity. My first story that I want to recommend, I feel like is an obvious choice. I feel like a lot of us teachers use this book. <laughs> so the book that I have is Phyllis's Orange Shirt. And this is the younger version. So this is the story that you would read to students like K to, K to two, uh, grades K to two. I do still use this book to teach in my grades three and four classroom, just because I think that the language is a very good, gentle introduction to the trauma that surrounds um, talking about residential schools and all, all of the things that happened at residential schools. This is a very gentle introduction. And so I like to kick off the week I teach about Orange Shirt Day or Truth and Reconciliation Day. I teach it for a full week prior to. Um, so I feel like this is a great introduction, simple, gentle introduction to start the conversation. And the activity that I recommend or that I do with my students is we do make a t-shirt. We kick it off, we draw a t-shirt on a piece of paper with our names on it, we color it orange, and we write a promise, a promise to stand up to racism, stand up to intolerance or bullying. Um, and how we're going to support truth and reconciliation. So we kick things off with this book and with the making the shirt activity. All right, and my second book, again, I feel like is another go-to book that a lot of us educators use in the classroom. So I would be remiss if I did not include it on our list, on my list. Uh, but this is the book that I have, Stolen Words by Melanie Florence. And I feel like this book does a wonderful job highlighting the lasting trauma from the residential schools. And so I like to read it next. So I do like to read this book first to kind of lay the groundwork. And then we use this book to talk about like, again, the lasting trauma, especially around language and how, you know, indigenous students were not allowed to use their native language and what kind of generational trauma has that perpetuated. And so I really like to point out the imagery in this book. I really like to point out you know, the grandfather's face or the, um, the page that has all of the stolen words and put it into a cage. I feel like that the, the imagery is almost more powerful than the words in the story, in my opinion. Um, but at the end of the story, what I do like is that they've included some um, pronunciations of Cree words. And I really like how they go over the words that they used, um, especially the word hello, tanse. And so the activity that I like to do with my students is we have a discussion around what it would be like to not be able to use your native language. We have a very profound discussion around that and how indigenous people were, were forced to forget or they were made to feel less than if they use their indigenous language. And so we need to uplift them and we need to uplift and highlight their language. And so the end of the lesson ends us with learning how to pronounce Tanse or say hello in, in Cree. And that is a word that I will encourage my students to use from then on. Instead of saying hello, I would encourage them to say Tanse or Tanse, hello. That way they are identifying it and they are recognizing that this is an important language that we need to uplift and uphold in our country. Okay, book number three is a new book to my library. It's called Swift Fox All Along and it's written by Rebecca Thomas. This is a new book to my library. I have not yet had a chance to teach it to my students, but I have read this book with my daughter uh, and it's a wonderful book. It's written by an indigenous author here in Canada. Her name again is Rebecca Thomas. She's a Mi'kmaq woman and she's registered with the Lennox First Nations. Um, Lennox Island First Nations, my apologies. It's just off the coast of PEI. This story is written from the perspective of herself. And she, Rebecca, the author, is the daughter of a residential school survivor. 
And this book talks about how her father really wants to find a way to connect with her and really wants to teach her about his indigenous background, but he was made to forget about all of it. He has lost a lot of his language. He has lost a lot of his uh, culture, but he has not lost his spirit. And that is the highlight of this book is that through his spirit, through his efforts, he really wants to try and connect Rebecca or in the, the girl in the story to her indigenous background. And so together they kind of fumble through and they, you know, nervously go about trying to find their connection. And it mentions her father's struggles and how he really wanted to show her how to perform their important sacred ceremonies like smudging or sweating. In the author's note, she also writes that every year, thanks to her father, she is learning to walk a little bit more like a Micmac and talk a little bit more like Micmac or think a little bit more like Micmac every year, thanks to her father. So again, like I mentioned, I have not yet had the opportunity to use this book in my classroom with my students, but one thing I would do is that they do a beautiful job of highlighting a smudging ceremony and the smells and the sights and the, the procedures that they perform during a smudging ceremony. And so I would take that opportunity after reading the story to talk about what smudging is, how it's a sacred ceremony for indigenous people. What does it look like? I would show videos to my students. Gosh, if I was lucky enough, I, I would have, you know, an elder come in or an indigenous person come in and, and take my students through a sacred, in, uh, sacred smudging ceremony with my students to experience that. So that would be my activity suggestion with you. If you could go ahead and coordinate that ahead of time, that would be amazing. But if you couldn't, then showing them videos and maybe bringing in some sweet grass or anything like that so that students can have a real tactile experience with a smudging ceremony would be absolutely fabulous. And also the way that this book connects to Orange Shirt Day is the fact that the father lost a lot of that culture. He lost a lot of that language, but he is still holding on to his indigenous spirit. And I think that's so important to share with the students is that we really need to make sure that we uplift all of the indigenous people in, in our country and their spirits and try our best to uphold their language and their culture and their ceremonies. Like we really need to make sure that we hold on to that. So I love that book. I love this book for that reason. My fourth book actually talks about Micmac as well. This book is called The Sharing Circle and it's written by Teresa Muse Dalian and the illustrations are done by Arthur, Arthur Stevens who are both Micmac people. So there is a connection there that you can make with your students if you read these in, in the order that I'm presenting them. So this book is actually a collection of seven stories and they are seven stories that talk about First Nations culture and, and uh, important aspects of First Nations culture. So the seven stories that are highlighted in this book are the eagle feather, the sacred herbs, the medicine pouch, the dream catcher, the talking circle, the medicine wheel, and the drum. And although there's a lot of pages in here, I feel like during the week leading up to Truth and Reconciliation Day, I feel like you could take one of these stories and really highlight it. The one that I really was drawn to, um, I've read to my students both the talking circle and the medicine pouch. Those are two that I've had the opportunity um, to teach with my students. Um, but again, I think any one of these stories would be appropriate to highlight indigenous culture. And like I mentioned before, we need to take this opportunity to uplift all of those important aspects of indigenous culture and also teaching students um, you know, so that become a little bit more familiar with sacred aspects of indigenous culture. So I believe that this is a wonderful addition to any classroom, especially because you can use it at any point in the year to teach about indigenous culture. It doesn't have to just be Truth and Reconciliation Day or Orange Shirt Day. So I highly recommend if you do not have yourself a copy of this book, I highly recommend that you grab it because again, it shares the seven sacred elements of indigenous culture. All right, and my fifth and final book that I would use to teach about Orange Shirt Day or National Truth and Reconciliation Day actually has nothing to do with residential schools, but it has everything to do with the premise around that. And that is about racism and intolerance. So I actually already have recommended this book in my Canadian Black History Month series where I shared a new book that you could use to teach in your classroom all month long in February for teaching about Black History Month. 
but this is such an important book to use in the classroom that I feel you also should use it in September to teach about Truth and Reconciliation Day or Insured Day because this book really goes into really good detail about what racism looks like, feels like, sounds like, what intolerance looks like, feels like, sounds like, and it also gives you suggestions on how we can be better. And so that's one thing that I really like about this book. It teaches students what they can do about it. If they see racism happening, if they see intolerance happening, maybe if they are noticing those tendencies in themselves, what they can do about it, this book talks about it. One awesome activity that they recommend in this book that I highly encourage you guys to do is they encourage you to have a World Culture Day. So they, they say you could do it at your school, but if you wanted to keep it on a smaller scale, you can do it within your own classrooms where you have everybody come and prepared with a little presentation about their own culture. And you can also include indigenous culture. If you don't have any students that identify as indigenous, then you can also have a presentation about that to tie it into you know, Truth and Reconciliation Day because it's important for us as teachers and students to understand different aspects of people's cultures so that we can stamp out any sort of those feelings of racism or intolerance or prejudices. I feel like it's important to use that opportunity to teach about our cultures and our backgrounds. So there you have it. Those are my five books that I would use to teach about uh, Orange Shirt Day or Truth and Reconciliation Day. Again, like I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, if you need a quick little activity, for free, you can go to my TPT shop and you can download this freebie activity, write a letter to a residential school survivor. Um, if you used it, you can leave a review, let me know how it was. You can also tag me on social media, um, you know, if your kids have used it in the classrooms. Thank you so much. I so appreciate all of your thumbs up, your likes, your subscribes, your comments. I really appreciate all of your support and your loyalty. It means the world to me. Thank you so much for watching this episode. You are an amazing educator. The fact that you are watching this because you are trying to plan for a better, more inclusive Orange Shirt Day or Truth and Reconciliation Day, you are awesome. So thank you for being here. I will see you guys in the next episode.